What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, The D here, AKA the Captain of Thunder Guy Pirates, AKA where you been, boy? AKA wait for the update video. I know it's been a while, but I am coming to you with this new blue nano microphone. The reason we're here tonight, gonna make a different type of video. Um, I know this content, this channel's more anime focused. I'm trying out a little something new. Shout out to that nigga, J Big for the idea. Um, that's my man's though, that's my man's though. At jbig07 on Twitter, follow my boy. And his YouTube and stuff are, are gonna be in the uh, description box below. So this year, in spite of the difficulties, we're going over in the update video. You know, I've been going kind of hard on the Twitch side of things and just wanted to talk about some games that I played, how I felt about them this year. Kind of strictly, I'm gonna do some honorable mentions about some games that I played but didn't really, well, I didn't play on stream. So this is gonna be mainly stream games, gonna be the main focus, the main meat. So I started off the year strong, January 1st, 2022, Bravely Default 2. It was either 2014 or 2015. In December of 2019, when I found out that they were coming out with a Bravely Default 2 at the Game Awards, I was naturally ecstatic. I just knew, you couldn't tell me shit. I knew I was gonna love this game. Ooh, boy, was I wrong. Let me preface this. I'm not saying that Bravely Default 2 is a bad game. I'm not saying Bravely Default 2 is a bad JRPG, but as a fan of the first two who played who, who played them both to death, I tried to enjoy this game, but there, I just couldn't do it. Ooh, I couldn't do it. Uh, and Tomoya Asano, who is the uh, one of the lead directors, or the lead director, Apparently he said he had to apologize because due to the performance and the critical reception of Bravely Second, he was like, no, oh, we decided to go with a different name, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no offense, bro. You should probably should have apologized for this shit. Ooh, Bravely Default 2 is a frustrating game. One thing that I always appreciated about the Bravely series was the graphics. Yet again, remember this started out on the 3DS. So I'm not talking about high fidelity, Shit, it was 3D models, kind of compressed. Those backgrounds were stylish. Like, the game just oozed charm. I'm sorry, this game just doesn't. Like, with even with the, with the 3D models, they tried to make them all HD to where everything looks, or where the characters look like dolls. It doesn't work. I mean, the voice acting is still on point. I, I can definitely say that I enjoyed the voices, that I, enjoy the idea of the game much rather than the game itself. A couple of boss fights that I've noticed is that this game is more of a, like the bosses are more of just hit sponges rather than actual like tests of skill. I think it might have been the Pictomancer boss that I remember I was fighting that boss for like an hour. And instead of actually, you know, outthinking the boss, I pretty much just had items and I outlasted her. I got her to the point where she had no mana left. Where, you know, she couldn't use any of her spells and I just wailed on her from there. So pretty much I just had, it's like every battle is a war of attrition and I don't like that. Now mind you, I'm pl I play games on normal. It's very rare I'll play a game on hard unless I really feel comfortable. But I'm like, eh, you know, I wanna get through the story. I might go back for a second playthrough eventually and I might do a hard mode. That was before playing the game. So I'm, I'm, once I beat this game, I'm probably never coming back. Normally, like these JRPGs, they have eight, they have eight chapters. We haven't even got to the end game loop yet, and we're already fighting bosses with 60,000 HP by himself. Mind you, I believe he had help. So it's 60,000 plus the HP of his minions. And the same boss from Bravely Default, at the same kind of point, would have had like 20,000 HP. I try to enjoy it, but. This game might be the most frustrating game I've played this year. I tried to play Devil May Cry, and this game is the most frustrating. But second on the list, and one of the games that I beat this year, Paper Mario, the original Paper Mario um, for the N64, it came out in like 2000, so it's obviously dated. But honestly, like, I can see this game being the root of a series that I genuinely love and adore. It's funny, it's charming, and yet again, like I said, the graphics weren't all that good, but like you can really tell that the art direction carried this game. 
and I'm so glad because even then it was a bit challenging like it wasn't the hardest game I've ever played hell not even the hardest game I've ever played on stream but it's definitely one that I won't soon forget it's something that I believe everyone should experience if you if you like turn-based RPGs JRPGs like it's like this game started Mario with the RPG twist like if you like Mario and Luigi games Pale Paper Mario games like this game is is it this game started it all and you can see you can kind of see how everything in else in those respective series kind of map themselves out from there and I just enjoyed playing it I enjoy like I think almost every boss I fought, I died the first time, and I'm not mad. With Paper Mario, it's, it always seemed like I was getting ahead of myself. I wasn't in my lane, and when I got out of my lane, you know, that conservative lane, that strategizing lane, that's where I kind of ran into issues, but with, with, with it, go back, you know, stick to your guns, strategize, you know, use your teammates a little bit more, because I kind of would try to muscle through things with just Mario, it's like no, utilize your teams a bit, utilize the abilities of your team, and really, especially that Huff and Puff fight. Like I had to use like a combination of not of tactics to not get hit, as well as shields to up my defense, and it was a really good fight. Like both times, it was a really good fight. I really enjoyed that one. And last, but certainly not least, Digimon Survive. String this one with the boys. Yet again, shout out to Key, Aaron, and that nigga, Jay Big Guy. And this is Bandai Namco's latest effort with Digimon. And this is really like part of their plan to revive Digimon. In presentation, the game is stunning. The, mo the models that they do use, the 2D models, are very beautifully rendered. The cutscenes are great. The music like jesus god like hear me on this it's like in my living room the my sunroom which is my office which is where i record which is where i stream from it's kind of sequestered off i remember when i was streaming i would be like my whole entire apartment would be dark i'd be in here with the light on and the music from this game will create such a vivid atmosphere hear me when i say this i would be playing a digimon but the music would cause me to look over my shoulder as if I'm playing a horror game. And this game may not be my favorite Digimon game ever. It's not. But when I tell you that the team at Bandai Namco have created something, they've created something. There's the visual novel side and the tactical RPG side. But one thing I can say about this game is it's heavy handed. Like, geez. Like, the visual novel portion, like, and, and this is coming from a person who enjoys story with games. I enjoy narratives. Like, the only reason I bought Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, when before that, that game, I didn't like Zelda games, was because of the narrative. So, this is coming from somebody who does like stories, who enjoys the narratives in games, enjoys the character arcs, the narrative progression. But this game is a bit heavy handed, like, and as my boy Jay will attest to, we, it was me, him, and Key, we did a co-stream the day this game came out, July 29th. Tell me why we spent five hours from like 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. streaming this game and we barely got out of the prologue. When playing this game, in between battles, like sections where you can actually engage in battle and raise your Digimon, you are in constant cutscenes with that are heavy, laden with dialogue. And yet again, this is a person who enjoys narrative games, but to say that it's a bit much would be an understatement that I just couldn't make. It is just rife with dialogue, 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 dialogue. Like to the point where I'll, I'll start scrolling on my phone. Like I won't skip because I don't think I can skip. But like I, I wanted to do like a full review, play all four routes, but I can't do it, man. It's just whoo a lot. I believe they could probably streamline this into something great. Like especially if they want to take this formula. But man, that story. And on top of that, it's. Kinda impenetrable. 
at least from my perspective, you might think differently, but at least from my perspective, this game, the story is impenetrable. Like I could like, but beyond these kids are trapped in the digital world and the Digimon partners are trying to save them beyond a couple of details relating to that. I really couldn't tell you what the hell I played or why I'm doing it. It's just the story gets me from point A to point B and it's like that old car that you drive. You know, it's all you could afford. It's it, it gets you to point A to point B, but it does. But you don't enjoy the ride. I can say that for, for the visual novel portion. But from the tactical RPG portion, I love it. Like this year has been my year of tactical RPGs. Um, from playing a little bit of Triangle Strategy, that might be on the docket for this upcoming year. Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses from finally playing all four routes, getting all the endings. Like this was right up my alley. Like I said, the models are great. The battlefields are pretty cool. It's relatively deep. I think it could be, you know, done better at a certain point. Like I think, at, like I think as a foundation, it works for like a Digimon tactical RPG. Man, it's good. Like you know, you have your type weaknesses. You know, you have your type chart. You know, you have your, uh, they use Digivolution, at least for the partners, partners of the main characters, as like a transformation during battle rather than like a slight like Pokemon Treats evolution. It just works. I think they have, like I said, I think it's a foundation for a, de for a decently, um, a decently robust system. It's something about surrounding an enemy Digimon and having all your Digimon counter attack because you caught that motherfucker lacking. Or you just using some super long range attack just to, just to evaporate somebody. That just makes me feel good. But yeah, it's like that pseudo chess, like I said, Fire Emblem tactical style. It makes me feel like I'm like like I'm a Digi Destiny, like like, like 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 I'm a tamer out here, you know, leading my army of super powerful Digimon to victory. And that's uh, gonna be a wrap. And this has been my top three games that I've streamed this year. Tell me what you thought, if you're a streamer, or hell, even if you're just playing games. I think I wanna expand upon this a little bit and talk about some other games I didn't stream that I just liked. Definitely tell me down in the comments below, like what games did you like this year? What are you looking forward to in the new year? Um, definitely got some more content in the pipeline. Glad, glad to be back. Glad to have y'all back. But yet again, this has been your boy, The D, signing out. See ya.